Hello, listeners. How are you this week? And welcome to episode 65 of Push to Plat. Well, look, we have a big show for you today. In fact, this whole week or so feels like a massive amount of content coming at you. I know the other day we hit you with The Last of Us 2 deep dive. You know, we also had we also had a wonderful interview with a Twitch streamer, a recently made Twitch streamer partner. Sure, it was like a musical bet, but I think it was interesting. And I and I hope you you do go and check out Chris Miller because he's an awesome dude, really lovely guy. And look, he's a fantastic guitarist. So why why wouldn't you? Now, before we jump in today and I introduce the guest, I'm just going to give a quick a quick little push on a, the next event that we're running here at Push to Plat. This event is open to anybody that would like to join. It's a casual event. It's a it's a chance for you to to improve your trophy or look even your achievements if you want. Hunting, you know, by yourself against yourself. We're not we're not we're not here to try and beat one another up. Here we're here to have fun, push each other up together. Basically. All the information can be found in the Discord, but all you really need to know is the wonderful eigenspace from PSN Profiles, the the tournament master, I suppose, the competition creator extraordinaire, has penned together an event for us. It involves submitting five lists of three games that you've platted. So any three games that you've platted over five lists, you can make your list themed if you like, or it can be random. All the lists go into sort of just a pool, and then we randomly draw out the lists. Uh, You need to complete five games, I believe it is, five Platinums. It's going to start the middle of July. It's going to finish the middle of December. We can't take late entry, so if you are interested, jump into the Discord now. Have a look. The games are very fair. We're not here to, we're not here to brutalize anyone with 100 hour games and four prizes we've got a couple of hoodies going up push to plat hoodies that are only available through this event they won't be sold later on so if it interests you come and come and check it out on the discord but look that's enough hard sell let's get in to episode 65 today i'm very lucky to be joined by the owner of knuffs which i'm sure i've mispronounced again listeners uh trophy site now if you don't know them there are i was going to say a niche site but they're really not anymore they've built up they have a massive amount of guides there but they have many unique guides many guides for games you can't find anywhere else they are, I think it's fair to say they're a family. We've heard before from Sean, one of their guide writers. Today we get to hear from the extraordinary, the wonderful trophy hunter from the Netherlands. Netherlands. Mick, how are you today, sir? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you for the great introduction. You're, you're, you're most welcome. I hope I didn't bore you there. I know I was carrying on a bit. So. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so, look, we had a guest on the other week or two, uh, Floris, who I mistakenly said was from Belgium, but he was also from the Netherlands. So, look, this is one of the countries that I have never been to. Can you tell me, what's it like living there? Well, I live in the, in the most southern province of, of the Netherlands. That's called Limburg. And actually, they call... Mm-hmm. Uh, was always out like Limburg is it's not really the Netherlands but it's more like uh, Belgium actually because I have this this really strange accent if I talk to let's say somebody from Amsterdam they always ask me are you from Belgium but that it's just because well it's just the accent here um, but in Limburg mm. keep it in this region um, it's really like open fields lots of nature relaxed people are just are just chill it's really great to be here, actually. It sounds perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's very easy to get that, you know, because I know there's, I know the history there. There's, you know, Belgium, you know, some of it was taken, some of it was given back, all this sort of business. So, you know, for an outsider, uh, you know, forgive me, listeners, for the other week, but I do apologize to Floris. But the Netherlands, we're, we're firmly there today. Now, sir, can we start off with a bit of your, your gaming background? How did you get into games and how did you get to, to where you are today with them? Um, well, I've been gaming uh, all my life, I guess. Um, in the early days, I had the Nintendo 64 um, with the old cartridges. I had a Game Boy Color, um, a PSP I had. I had a Wii. I, I have a Nintendo Switch now, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 2, 3, 4. Uh, I never had the one. Uh, PC gaming, I do have a PC, uh, gaming PC, expensive one. But I do have actually everything, I guess, <laughs> when it comes to the gaming platforms. I love it. How do you find time to, to, to play everything? Well, in the past uh, five years, I was a student. Uh, so 
mm. well actually in the past 10 years or, or 20 years or you want to see it but i was a student and well if you if you go to school you have a uh, lot of time that's not really a problem yes. but since uh, <laughs> november i've graduated graduated and since then i've been work, working uh, 40 hours a week so now i have a little bit less time i guess um but i have to make time for the games I, look, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's a harsh reality, isn't it, when the real world starts, when you're finally no longer a student. But there's, there is still time for games. It's wonderful to hear. So can I ask, you, you're playing on all these systems. Do you have a preferred console or, or PC, or do you, do you treat them all equally? Uh, well, for now, I just play on the PlayStation 4. Uh, but I think that's mm-hmm. because of my website. Well, creating content um, delegates you to, I guess, one platform, being on multiple I won't achieve anything because writing a guide it takes up a lot of time um, and having only the evening hours to play a game but if you're going to play multiple platforms you won't have enough time to finish a game within let's say a week or two so for now it's just playstation 4 okay perfect for me. now we will get into the site obviously uh in a moment but can i ask what sort of gamer are you then are you would you classify yourself as a completionist or a, i mean do you see yourself as a trophy hunter what what sort of gamer are you well in, in the beginning of playstation 4 i wasn't really a trophy hunter i had like like zero trophies uh, but eventually i got the hang of it and i was like hey that's cool trophies that's that's fun to collect hmm. so i started uh, to collecting trophies but I don't really see myself as a completionist because I have like a 70% of completion overall. And if I just don't like a game, I would just don't play it. I would just shut it down and go to the next one. Yes, I look, I, I look, you're 70%. It's low, but, you know, I'll, I'll allow it. But, yeah, <laughs> I look, I, I, I agree with, you know, I, I'm hovering at the 59%, so you can you can tell I'm a harsh critic of the completionist uh, <laughs> mentality. But I like that idea of, of just moving on when you've, you've had enough. I think it's very natural. I did read, now correct me if I'm wrong here, that you're not a fan of stacking games. In fact, I don't think you stack any games. Is that correct? Yes, I currently have a, a trophy list of 223 platinum of which none are a stack. It's all unique games. I mean, I do have them. I, I like, I get, uh, if I get the Ratalaika codes, um, I get like one AU code and one NA code. So I got like 2000 stacks if I want, but I just don't like it. It's boring. Yes. Yeah. No, look, I, look, I agree. You know, there, there'd be many trophy hunters that listen to this because, you know, there, there's many of them are trophy whores, I suppose, is the correct term. You know, maybe you think I am. Look, I probably am, I suppose. <laughs> so, you know, it, we, we'd be shocked. Our, our drawer is on the ground that you, you don't play these. But look, I totally understand because it does suck up uh, time or whatever else. Can, uh, can I ask then what style or what genre of game do you like? the most do you have a have a favorite uh well i think it's the adventure games the shooter games um i guess it's the, the psvr games uh, often they are the genre of, mm. of themselves i guess i think those three are the main uh, categories but if you look at my list i think you will see uh, a game of, of every genre really it's not really one one thing i play yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So, look, why don't we jump into a little bit about what we've been playing, if you like, and then I want to move on to to about the website, how you started it and why you started it, I think, and all these things. But before we get there, Nick, our listeners, they like games. You know, they like to hear about games. So could I ask you, sort of, what, what have you been playing recently that you could share with them some info on? Well, recently I've been playing the Darius Cosmic Collection. That's like this this old school uh, ported um, arcade game. Mm-hmm. It's where you you fly a ship and you have to kill all these these uh, old school bosses in, in pixel style. And we got them from a PR Hound. And I've been playing now with Matthew, uh, one of my co-writers. And that was really fun. Uh, we got uh, two games or two bundles. I would say they're really fun, but uh, just a little bit too expensive. Uh, one game is like 60 euros and the other one is 40. But I think that's just a little bit too much. You get like eight games in one bundle, but still, I think it's a little bit too much. Also been playing Star Wars Episode Racer. Hmm. Now, look, just before just before we go on, because, you know, I'm sure Sean warned you that I like to, you know, go off a bit here on tangents and just draw things out. You know, it's it's very enjoyable for me. I want to I wanna ask about this game before you, you move on from it. I'm always scared of these games because if you didn't play them as a kid, if you don't have experience with the past, they tend to be very difficult. Is this Darius quite a difficult collection? Yes, it is. Because you get like, um, you get like five lives. 
and if you die, you lose all your power-ups. So what you need to do is you play for like a really a, a tiny bit and you press the save button. Then again, you play for a tiny bit and you press the save button. And if you die, you're just going to reload the save file. Ah, so this plays like the arcade archives uh, save interrupts. Yeah. Yes, but you can you can make the save in game, so you don't have to quit the game. That's really nice. Yeah, it is nice. That makes it a, a lot quicker. Okay. Yeah. But sorry. Uh, I sorry to interrupt. So Star Wars, you were saying? Yes. Um. Well, I I had Star Wars on my uh, Nintendo 64 uh, back mm. in the day when I was like five or something. Um. And th this is um actually the same game but released on the PlayStation 4. Um, I believe they did a few new features, but they didn't really enhance any, any graphics or something. So it's like a one-to-one -one port. And it's really fun to play play an old-school racer. Um, the game has cheats, and you can actually complete it in a, in a, in a quick time. Uh, let's say l like 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but Matthew and I played it in the normal way. And it's, um, I would say, about four hours to five hours um, playing time. Yeah. And I believe the game is uh, $15. So that's really a good good time. It's funny, Mick, because I talked about this game the other week, and I think I think it's a nostalgia trip. If you if you played this on NES, I think it, it probably is good value, and you'll enjoy it. But if you didn't, I think it grows tiresome very quickly. Yeah, it, it does give the, the the feeling back to the old school days. So if you if you played it before, it's really mm. really nice to do. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Now, look, I want to ask you about this Octonaut because, you know, I slept on it and I missed out, but I'm sure it's coming again, you know, <laughs> in the future with East Asia Soft. I don't know if you know anything about that or not. I don't think they've said, but, uh, but what is it? Is it fun or not? Because I can't think of anything better than playing as an octopus that can fly. Well, it's actually quite the same as the Darius Cosmic Collection. It's also uh, a mm -hmm. side scroller that, that you have to shoot enemies that come flying at you. I would say just a, a newer game, a, a lot easier. And what you have to do, you have to play as an octopus, of course, Oct Octonaut, the name already says it. Um, you have to kill a couple of enemies. Um, I believe you have to clear six levels. But there's one main trick in this game. You have to collect the diamonds. And the diamonds always spawn as the color green. And if you want to change the color, you have to shoot the diamonds. So if you shoot them once, they, they turn from green to yellow, then from yellow to red, and from red to purple, and from purple to violet. And uh, there's a couple of trophies uh, tied to that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. And w there's no word on when it's coming, is it? Maybe next week? Or? No, I, I, did, I did email uh, the publisher, mm. East Asia Soft. Um, and they just said that it was delayed. Really, everything they mentioned about it. Yeah, fair enough. Well, something something to look forward to. Now, the next one, my, my co-host on Level Cap, Joe, who's unfortunately, listen, is still waylaid with The Last of Us 2. Turns out it's longer than any of us expected, and he's lost somewhere towards the end, I think, trying to finish it. But then he's very eager to get into the SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, I understand you wrote the guide for this game. Uh, is this is this a throwback to your childhood, perhaps? No, not really, because I never, I never played the original SpongeBob. Oh. Um, but I, I was really excited when I saw this game coming out, and I was like, hey, that's something I have to play. And, well, we got it, uh, of course, uh, before the release. Mm. That's really what we generally get, uh, like a couple of days. And I started playing it, and I was like, hey, Pete, perhaps you can, we can work together on this. So what I did, I just played the game as fast as I could, uh, taking all the screenshots. And I had Pete uh, write up all the details where every collectible was. You have to collect like 100, yeah, the stupid golden things. I don't know what they're called. And uh, the 80 spatula, yeah. yeah, that. <laughs> and the uh, 80 socks. So I took all the screenshots. I did, uh, did set up the guide and, and, uh, and the design of the guide. And he just filled in all the details. And that was really fun to do. I didn't uh, realize I started playing a little bit of this game last night, and it's it's really a collectathon, isn't it? This uh, THQ Nordic here. It's a real throwback to, to older style games, but I mean, it's it's very colorful and uh, like I, I know I know you do some of these THQ games that come through, and I mean they're a mixed bunch. They're they're a B grade developer, which is fine. They own that, which is wonderful to see. And to be honest with you, their their products are getting stronger and stronger, uh, with a few exceptions maybe on the racing side, but. Um, but this one, it was, from what I've played so far, I played up to the, the first boss, which I believe was some sort of a flying squid thing. It's good. It's enjoyable. But there is a lot going on in those levels. Yeah, it's, it's a jellyfish king, the first boss. Mm. Um, actually, the first level is, is quite a big one. Mm. It's like this open field thing. 
where you have to have to uh, rescue Patrick. And it's really fun because you, you have to destroy all these enemies and it's really colorful, like you mentioned. And But I think it's, it's especially designed for kids, of course, but hey. We are just grown-up kids. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. And what I liked about this game is that, uh, well, at least at least for the the first section up to the end of the first level, and I assume for the whole game, it's all fully voiced as well. The the dialogue, which is w- wonderful, and the controls are not janky or they're not floaty. I found them I found them pretty tight. For there there is some platforming I've come across. It's it's not you know challenging platforming or whatever, but it's it's fun platforming and the controls work well. The game the game is a good package, and I think for the price, I think it's uh, I think it's one you could recommend. Or I could recommend as well i think so yeah it's a good game i think it's 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 almost uh classify as a, as a triple a game i suppose it's really good yeah i mean the, the games are getting are getting better i'm trying to i know you're a bit of a racing game person you like i know they did one it's eluding me oh they did the monster truck one uh recently uh I th- it wasn't the monster jam but whatever it was which was a little bit dicey but you know, by and large, they're, they're producing some good stuff, which is luckily, lucky, Mick, because, of course, they have like 80, 80 or 90 different licenses now under their belt. So, so it's going to be interesting yeah. to see. I don't know. Did you touch this Desperados that they, they put out recently? or Pete, I, I did request it and Pete is only playing it and he's writing the guide. Oh, um, but I'm, I'm not sure what it's about. I have to ask Pete. Yeah, it it looks like it's a very it's a top down strategy. It looks pretty pretty involved. So I, I look forward to hearing. Well, they they did they did sound uh, like this PDF guide yes. with a lot of uh, tips and tricks, <laughs> and it included some um, uh, cheats actually. Oh, good. <laughs> so it's like uh, no die and stuff like that. Ah, we, we are able to use that, uh, but uh, we we aren't able to share them. They ask, um, so we actually can't uh, write a guide about cheating. So we have to use the, the proper way. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. See, so there you go, listeners. There are a few tricks behind this guide writing business, obviously. I see, I see. But look, we'll, we'll get to that. Now, Minecraft Dungeons, I believe you wrote the guide for this as well. I've played a yes, little yes. bit of this. What did you did, what did you think? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I played it with my uh, my brother. Uh, we were like, hey, let's play this game. We actually bought it ourselves. We didn't get any codes or something. Mm-hmm. So the sell a self boat game. Um that was really fun. It was like it's not it's not too long. It's like I would say, fifteen hours to twenty hours. I have actually have to clear a few a few levels, like a bunch of ten, I suppose. I have to um, grind a bit to get uh, better weapons. You can unlock uh, really cool weapons uh, like uh, a hammer that that gives lightning and and shocks every enemy. It's really cool. You have to fight against all these uh, Minecraft um, enemies, which is really fun. You can play it in a local co-op. Uh, also a multiplayer the only downside was that there's a couple of bugs in the game and um, for one uh, my brother lost his character at level 15 so i had to start all over again that's not great <laughs> no. although, although, although i believe it has been patched at least once or twice so that that may have come out of that already i'm, I'm i know you played it close to launch so that that may yeah. be listen it listen it beware what i wanted to ask though did you play any of it solo uh, or only only all in co-op uh, Minecraft, I only played in co-op. Yeah, because I, I know you can play it solo as well, but I think overall it's a much better experience from what I've heard in co-op. Yeah, it's just way more fun because it's one of these games that if you die solo, you just die and you just uh, lose a life. But if you play in co-op and you die, uh, you can ask your partner to revive you so you don't lose a life. That makes it just a bit easier. This is the game that you have to play in effect three times as well. Is that correct? Yeah, you have to. Uh, you have three difficulties. You have to, the normal one. Uh, the apocalypse difficulty and I don't know the expert difficulty or something. So like three difficulties, and with each difficulty mm. you get uh, new enemies and, and a tougher boss. Oh, okay, so it's not it's not just a total rehash of the run again. It it does evolve. No, it's it's way harder. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now that's that's interesting. Yeah. Now please feel free to throw out any games, but before you do, there's one that I want to ask you about. I noticed you didn't you played about as much as I did by the look of it, but look, I enjoyed it for what I played. Uh, just a little time consuming. I felt the moving out here for for the PS4 yeah. also Xbox. <laughs> as you knew where I was going. What do you think of this co-op? you know, overcooked style moving game, I suppose. Well, we, we have good contacts with Team 17. It's a publisher of the games. Um, mm. And I did write a guide on, on Overcooked, and it was really fun. Um, but the mm. problem is I play those games with my, with my buddies on local co-op. So I have to invite my buddies. They have to come play over. And, well, it just takes a lot of time to really complete the game. And I must say uh, Overcooked was a bit easier than, than moving out. 
um, in terms of, of trophies and, and completing the levels. Uh, the problem with moving out is um, getting the, the golden time, eh? like, like a set, uh, set amount of time to complete the level is it's, it's okay, it's doable. But you have like these, these three objectives you need to complete, uh, like uh, uh, k k kill, kill, um, mm -hmm. kill all windows or destroy all windows. And you, you don't know the objective until you complete the game of the, of the levels, I must say. So you have to replay the levels a lot of times. Which makes it a bit harder to get the platinum, I think. I, I think I think you're right. That was that was part of my problem with it. I played the first few levels and I didn't realize that. And I was like, I'm enjoying this. This will be a fine platinum. It won't be too bad. And then I realized, as you said, once you complete the level, all these other things come out, and it, it sort of I sort of realized how many times I would be playing each of the levels. So, but it it, it is really yeah. fun. And I must admit that even though it is a co-op game, I've played it largely by myself. And yes, it, there's some things that are more difficult and more frustrating, but it is. It it is doable, I think, by yourself. I think some of the later levels will be harder, but the time is actually it's, it, there is enough time, I think, to, to do it as a one person. Yeah, you do. You do have. Um, I, I don't know. I believe it's called the the handicap mode or the assist mode. That's correct. Yeah. Um, but but I I haven't tried it out. I believe the game will get a lot easier if you if you turn it on. Yes, it does. The time limits by by far they uh, they get much much bigger. So it definitely definitely takes the pressure off if you are playing by yourself. I would I would say that. Yeah. Now I know that you're also a bit of a VR fan as well. You know, look, I I like to yes. I like to touch the VR occasionally. I put it on. I rarely play it though. But <laughs> what what is the draw to you? Why do you like so much about the VR? Um, well, uh, I always like to try, of course, new technologies. So I was like, hey, this, this VR thing, that's really, really cool. And I just wanted to try it. So uh, I think about a year or two ago, I bought it. Um, and it's really fun. You get like this, this unique experiences in, in the VR that you can't really enjoy on, on just a normal game, I would say. Um, mm. And I would think that the, my favorite PSVR game would be oh, let me think i think prison boss vr ah yeah do you know that i know it i've never played it but i'm familiar with it yes yeah yeah i will just give a brief description of it it's like this game and you're in, in prison and you have to craft all these these little items let's say a, a, a stuffed bear a loaf ladder a alcohol cookies stuff like that and you're on this it's really really tight area you have not too much space and you have to you have to craft all these these items and occasionally uh, the guard wa walks by, past your cell. And if he does, you need to hide all these items. Because if he finds any, he will just take them all away. And getting enough points will, will unlock, of course, the, the next level of the prison. You have to work your way up. And well, I really think that's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's a, it, one of these crafting style uh, VR games. It's, it's a little bit lengthy as well, am I right? It's not, it's not a two or three hour experience. This is a, a full... No, I would say about an hour or ten, I think. Oh, for the whole game, or yeah. It's, oh, it's okay, it is. Two, two. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, well, I definitely need to add that to my list. Anything around the five minutes to one hour mark is definitely valid in my my opinion. But there's a there's a run of games here that I want to ask you about. Uh, that uh, the one of the sad things with VR, of course, is that the games they come and then they disappear very quickly. I think so. So it's easy to forget that they they ever appeared, or well, at least on the PlayStation, perhaps not on the PC side. And the first one I want to ask you about is the Pixel Ripped 1995. It was two stacks, the EU and the NA, I believe. What did you think of this? I've been sitting on the fence on this one for some time. Yeah, uh, well, it's it's part two. Uh, it's, it's it's one of two of the series. Mm -hmm. um, you have the Pixel Ripped in 1989. I have mm -hmm. 1995. And 1995 is part two. And I think it's better than part one. I really enjoyed it. Um, and, and why? Uh, of course, part one didn't have a platinum trophy. Part two does. <laughs> so that's really a thing. Um, and, and one of the trophies in, in part one uh, was you had, you had to complete uh, this level without actually looking at, at, at the screen. So you have to, you have to play with your yeah. eyes closed. It's really stupid, stupid trophy. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> No, so uh, that's was really one of the main reasons. I, I I did like the gameplay, of course, but I just didn't like the trophies and and not having a platinum one. Mm. Um, and then part two, it's it's a bit more focused on on the family thing and on on Christmas. Um, and well, that's that's one level that really that I really enjoyed. It's it's like this this uh, Easter egg toward the uh, streets of rage, or, or this fighting game. I don't know what's really called. 
Yeah. And you have this level, but you have to beat up everybody, every kid in the game. And that's really fun. Yeah, that, that's interesting. And overall, it handles smoothly yeah, in VR? Yeah, it, it's, it's just played just fine. It's really a good VR game. Okay, excellent. So listen, that's Pixel Ripped 1995 EU and NA. Now, the next one that I want to ask, and the reason I've been sitting on the fence on this is that some most VR games are, are fairly reasonably priced, but every now and then one comes along, which is a little bit more. Now, I, I don't judge you know games by the price tag. I, I think everything is valid, but it, it, does, it does make me wonder sometimes, especially if I know it's a, a shorter experience, whether it's worth it or not. Now, I'm pretty much convinced that it is worth it but i'd love to hear your opinion on it and this is of course the paper beast <laughs> um oh my god paper beast oh no <laughs> it, it's it's a strange game let me put it that way i mean you have to like it to play it um you just you just spawn in this in this desert and there was this, this this animal coming towards you and he drops like this gem giving you the ability to walk and you just have to you have to walk in the area it's it's really it's really a strange game actually how you mention it. I, I really can't describe it and and how to mm. in terms of gameplay because it's 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 just really strange. It is fun actually, but you have to do this these, these stupid things in game. You have to um, pull up animals. You have to you have to dig holes in in the water to get something to revive. And you don't really get tips and and where to go in a game. It's really you have to try it, I would say. It's, it's, you have to try it. Is is it worth trying? Is it worth the time investment? But it, it is something about, I would say, five hours gameplay, I guess. So it's kind of short. But I don't know how, how much is it in money. I'm not sure. I think I think around uh, 40, uh, 40 or fifty Australian. So it's it's like a three quarter price game, I suppose. But uh, but yeah. Mm. But I mean, it sounds interesting from from the way you describe it. I've heard it described as a yeah. walking sim, you know, a puzzler of sorts, all sorts of things. So yeah, I would say that's that's a good good uh, yeah term for it. But I would get it if if it's on discount. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's like most things. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now the the next thing that again, this is I love to vulture people's trophy lists here, so you'll just have to bear with me. But the next one that I I find interesting here is this down the rabbit hole. This I believe Alice in Wonderland esque VR game. Yes, a hundred percent game. So it probably annoyed you that there was no platinum by the sound of it. But you know, once you got over that, how did you find the experience? And I was this was really nice because it it, it actually is Alice in Wonderland, huh? Because uh, uh, only Alice isn't there, really, but um, it's it's resolving around that story, um, and it was really mm. fun. It's like this this yeah, what do you call it a theater setting. You have like this. You, you look into a screen in some sort. You can you can manage um, um, the character, and you meet all mm-hmm. these um, Alice of Wonderland uh, characters like the Hatter and, and the Bunny, and I don't really what, what the names are, but you you all meet them. You actually meet also uh, the Queens of Heart. And the fun thing is, uh, the main plot resolves around mm-hmm. uh, a character called uh, Three and a Half or, or Four and a Half. It's like um, you have these these cards in, in game, eh? like uh, you have uh, uh, the, the Queen of 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 of, of spa- Spade and stuff like that. Eh? You have to have one, two, three, four, five until the whole mm-hmm. card uh, cell is complete. Um, but if if like um, the five yes. and the four would make a child, you get four and a half. That's really the joke in the game. Yeah, I like it. I like. It. And and the half the half cards like the four and a half cards aren't really accepted by the other cards, so they're like really outcast. <laughs> and that's kind of what the game resolves about. Yeah, yeah. It's, I I've watched a bit of footage of this game, and I think this is the type of VR games that that interests me. They they sort of they're immersive in a way that that you you're you're sort of a participant, but you're not. You know, it's not like a a first person. You know, you're you're fully involved in the game, but you're you're immersed in the world a little bit. And I I you know slower games. I think for me, and I know that's not for everybody in VR. I mean, we you know we've recently got this uh, the Walking Dead game, which is anything but slow. You know, it's, it's still still immersive. But I think for me i like that style in the vr a lot so it's interesting now look you know as a guide writer you know i imagine you need to get through games quickly as you've already sort of said you know and you you have a lot of games across your plate so you you can't spend too long on any one thing so so how do you come about a game like monster hunter world (laughs) well i actually played that uh, just for fun i didn't really write anything on it (laughs) Well, I was like, well, you can only, you can always play these, these easy games, but I really liked Monster Hunter World. Yes. And I was like, hey, just let, mm-hmm. let's go for that platinum game. And I put like, I believe, thousand hours in it in both games together. 
There was really a lot. You've platinum both of them? I see the uh, Iceborne. Yes, I, yeah. I, did, I did play platinum both, yes. Congratulations. Yeah, I hear nightmare <laughs> and horror stories about the RNG. And is it the, the mini crowns? They're the hard ones to get? Or the is it the uh, big crowns? No, just both. Both, both. both are equal hard. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, but the thing is, um, at the start, you, just, you don't really get the crowns. Mm. Um, but until you reach level 30 or something, it was, I guess, um, you, you only can find them then. Uh, but now... They have like these events in game, and with these events you get the crowns a lot easier. So if you just play the events and, and farm a bit, I would say like like five or six games for each event, I think you have a good chance at getting uh, get, getting the crowns. It's it's interesting, like you know, I pulled that game out, but looking closer at your list, I mean, you have you have quite a few big games. I see you've platinum Borderlands three here as well. So you're you know you've you've made some you know some ground in the division two even you know not a small game by by any stretch. So you, you do balance a lot of these indie titles out with some triple A uh, games as well, don't you? Yeah, but th- th- those games are not really uh, for the site. I just I just buy them for myself really, and I just I just play them for fun and. Sometimes I get the, well, almost all times I get the platinum game, platinum trophy. Mm. Uh, but sometimes I just play them uh, a bit, like Division Two, and I don't really complete them. So, listeners, I'm just going to drop a little bit of love on you this week with a couple of games. And look, I'll start with The Last of Us Two. Obviously, we don't need to say any more about that. What more could we say? We said it all in the the wonderful deep dive of the conversation there with Levi. But I'll just just add to that now that I have gone on and platted the game. I found the end game of cleaning up very easy. The the use of your your clear save, if you like your your completed auto save, uh, that you can save again and then transfer to another save slot, makes the collectible hunt really really simple obviously without spoilers i i've i think well i could probably recommend making sure you've done all the collectibles in the last section of the game from sort of the beginning of seattle day two through to the end if you're if you're sort of scavenging fairly well up to there you don't and and not using a guide either you know for locations up to there just scavenging normally you're probably going to have enough of the uh enough of the supplements and the gears and things to fix your weapons by just naturally playing the game to that point so if you've uh if you get to that sort of you know second section of the game seattle day two which is not that far in and you have cleaned out the the collectibles off the um the auto save and as i said the complete game save that's where your platinum will pop so it might even save you a bit of time but look you know it's very painless so so overall you know it's a it's a great way to earn what is really an easy platinum if if long but Today, what I'd like to jump on you is a is another game by this Jandusoft. It's a wonderful, wonderful developer and publisher, this company. They make, yes, they're quirky games. They're, they're games outside of the box. And yes, they're, you know, a B-grade. They're an indie studio. But they're a lot of fun. Like, I'm thinking of the TV uh, Calamity game that recently came out. And, of course, the Smoot Summer summer games as well. They're, they're just enjoyable. And they're not highly priced. I think that this game here we'll talk about today, Indie, indie Clips, uh, Indie Clips, it's only like ten dollars us or, or 12 australian so it's very very reasonable now what it is it's basically the story of a developer if you like an indie developer it's very amusing it's sort of you know it's you know it, it pokes fun at a lot of things but what really sets this game apart if, if you don't like you know if you're not that interested in story is that the game is totally made up of of vn sort of walking sim elements but but then all these mini games there's tons of them there's like 15 or 16 now what what is so funny about it is they're all based on certain things you know certain other you know well known indie games so we've got like the binding of isaac here i mean you know enter the enter the gungeon is is represented here there's mortal mortal combat definitely on an indie game it's in there as well there's uh, i mean there's some absurd things like showering with your grandpa they've turned into a mini game as well with a fantastic trophy trophy hunters if you're looking for a good name that is that is the trophy for you look it's got it's got all sorts of everything in there now it's not all easy either obviously the 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 quicker you pick up the mini games the easier it is most can be done first go but there is one there a geometry jack which is sort of an endless runner where the hit detection is not great and uh, unfortunately this is you know not uncommon with these sort of level of games and studios is that the the bigger the tv you play it on the more problem you're going to have because of the latency so these are these are perfect things for small screens i suppose to to minimize the latency on the the hit detection but those things that little thing aside it's a wonderful 
wonderful game. It can be platted in about three or so hours, two to three hours. Now, there are guides available as well. I used one on the True Achievement site. It's a fantastic guide for just what you do between the sections. But it's very straightforward. There's prompts all the way. Probably the only negative in this game is when you're loading between sections, there's about a five to ten second black screen. Again, it's not a major problem or whatever else, but because some of the sections you go back and forward in, it's just a little little monotonous. But the mini games themselves are great because they load up almost instantaneously if you do fail. Some of them are miscellaneous trophies, so you don't have to pass them, but the greater majority you do have to pass. One of the things to be careful of in the game is that there is no save within a chapter. So there's sort of five chapters, but you do need to complete a chapter to save. So if you're if you're running into a tough mini game towards the end of the chapter, if you quit out, just be you know rage quit out. You be careful. You're going to have to play that whole chapter again. But again, it's not it's not too long. There is two stacks of it as well, the NA and the EU stack. So. The second time through, it's a very, very easy and quick plat. Uh, if you if you know what you're doing. Next up, I'll throw out here. Now, what shall I throw out next? A little bit of the Goosebumps Dead of Night. So again, there's two stacks here, EU and NA. But look, you're not buying both stacks unless you're mortgaging your house. Because for some reason, the price, particularly on the UK store, is is through the roof. I don't think it's much better on the NA store, but but it's high. Now, this game can, can, be, can be platted in an hour with a video walkthrough. But look, if you're going to pay the money they want for this game, uh, you're not going to be using a guide. You're going to want to enjoy it. And it is a game worth enjoying. Even without a guide, it's going to take you about three hours it is a massive improvement on the first game it plays like a a mystery game if you like this stealth in the first chapter this sort of investigation in the second chapter i suppose an overall adventure game there are three chapters most of the trophies are, are tied up with dying from certain characters so if you know that going in every time there's a new enemy you can just die to them or whatever else having said that i mean it is a child's game but the themes are, are beyond beyond children there are some there's a, there's a, some kind of scary jump scary moments in this game as well that were, were absent in the in the first so look you know if, if you're prepared to extend your wallet that far then it, it's a, it's a it's a worthwhile time i think but again go in knowing it's a a short game at three hours uh, if you're not put it in the wish list and you know I, I eventually there will be a price reduction on on this uh goosebumps dead of night i am sure and then really the only one that i want to drop on you the only other one i suppose here is the new sword art online game the alicization lycrosis so I've played a little bit of all of these games so far, and I feel that it's probably one of the greatest JRP series, JRPG series that has been so poorly represented and poorly done by in the games. I think it's a real missed opportunity. So going into this game, I didn't have high expectations. The UI in these games, if you've never played them, is off the charts fucking dreadful. It's you know they couldn't have they couldn't have created anything worse if they'd even tried. I'm convinced that they 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 you know put a whole lot of ideas together and just picked the worst one and then multiplied it by. 10, but th that's always been my handicap in the games before. Yes, of course, they are massively grindy games with affinity trophies, and this one will be will be no different. But what I found in the others is that I, I really like the world, and they're very true to the anime, um, to the different arcs. I mean, they literally take the cutscenes out of the anime. So I, I had fingers crossed going into this. Now, I know this is a full price game, and you know I know that potentially down the track, if you're prepared to wait a year or two, it will drop substantially, but there is a season pass with two expansions, so you may be, be waiting a while. I'm happy to report, I'm only three hours in, but I'm happy to report the UI system is, is totally revamped. It's totally different. It's much more streamlined into a game like this that you would expect because obviously there's a lot of interaction with the menus in this style of a JRPG. So I'm glad they fixed it. Everything else is much the same. So if you've played the other games, you'll, you'll know what to expect going in. The cutscenes, they're beautiful, obviously. Now, this one here, I understand. I'm not up on the current arc, but I understand the Alicization Lycrosis is the current arc, which is only releasing in Japan sort of at the moment. It's ongoing through June, June to August. So I don't even think there's a, a subbed version of it yet, or, or a dubbed version, I should say, at this point. There may be. I may be incorrect. You can, you can check. But it does hold very true, I'm told, to the story, although the game does provide an alternative ending to to what the series will do uh to the series arc so that'll that'll be interesting as well if you're prepared to commit the 50 to 100 hours it's going to take to get there so obviously as we said there are very grindy 
the graphics are good for this style of game, but then you have to understand the style of game it is. Uh, if you've played the others before, you'll know. I really like what they've done with the graphics. Obviously, it's a massive open world, so they've used a lot of like shading in the colors, in the leaves, in the in the the forest, in the grass. So you can make it out, but it's not it's not hyper stylized like you know your Nino Cooney or something like this. But it's also not you know ultra realistic like you're going to expect of a triple A AAA studio. But again, if you know that going in, it's not a problem. And you're not playing these games for the graphics anyway. You're playing them for the character relations, the story, and the you know the interaction of which there there really is is plenty as well. Kurito is back as a guy as well. If you're familiar with the previous arc, you know that may have greater Jill Goat. It definitely did mine, but now he's he's back again. In fact, as all great JRPGs, he's appeared in the virtual world, but he doesn't know uh, you know how he got there. Amnesia is a wonderful thing, I suppose. So look, I'm looking forward to getting into that game, but obviously that's a massive long term project that there's something just to to chip away at i suppose in amongst all the others I'll also take a quick opportunity to give our Patreon producers a shout out. We did pick up a, a new Patreon producer the other month, Ready to Ebeg, which wonderful name, so wonderful. And actually a previous guest on the show as well. As an upcoming guest, I think in the future when I kick myself into gear. So I am I'm working on that, sir. But he has he has uh, <laughs> suggested, well not suggested, he's enforcing uh, his Patreon pick will be Deadly Premonition. The wonderful janky, uh, I'm told, PS3 three game with a heart of gold if you can get far enough into it so i'm looking forward to that i have picked it up and that will be will be starting in the next few weeks but i did start last night the lost odyssey on xbox uh patreon producer rick's suggestion i th- understand he's going to be starting it as well soon i feel that's going to take me so around two months or so but i know you have given me a big out there by not having to collect all the the treasures and things but i'm looking forward to getting into that and i actually picked up there's a little bit of dlc sort of a dungeon or something with a super boss so I, I think it was a dollar so I thought well why not you know if you're gonna play the whole game you might as well play the last five minutes as well so we'll, we'll see how that all goes so I look forward to getting into those games as well but I know it's picking up listeners I know the ghosts uh, is coming out this week as well so we're getting a lot of a lot of new stuff uh, in the works very shortly too so before we throw back into the topic, I suppose, today, which will be having a look at Noth's guides and uh, Mick, the, the owner here, as we just talk about how it all started and, and how it all sort of works. But before we do, why don't we just take a short break and we'll be right back with you. to do now is shift across to to the site and and to to how it all came about so first off <laughs> i'd like you to pronounce it for me properly so that i can you know continue to butcher it on this show well it's pronounced knuff knuff <laughs> I, I, yes i'm gonna let you say it i think we'll be safer but look how did why did you start it how did it come about yeah well, just like i mentioned in, in the really beginning of the show uh, i was a student and I wanted to play games, but I really didn't have the money to, to buy any games. <laughs> and well, they're quite expensive actually. So I was like, how do mm. I, how do I, um, I, do, I mean, I, I had the time to play it, but I didn't have the money. So I wanted to keep the time because I didn't want to go to work and I wanted to play games. I was like, how do I resolve this mystery of getting games? And I was like, mm. what if I ever make this website and just ask the games for free? <laughs> And I think that really worked out nice. <laughs> it's 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 so funny because I, I didn't think you were going to say that, actually. I thought you were going to have some, you know, big thing about how you wanted to give back to the community and all this garbage and stuff like this. But at the core of it, and I'm sure you've seen this before, there are many people, I think, that believe people go into reviewing games or writing trophy guides solely for the reason that they can get the game early so they can get to play it before everyone else. And I know this really pisses some people off. 
uh, Mick, as well. But the, the reality is that the amount of time you might get earlier, it, it's really invested in actually writing the guide. I mean, it's a huge amount of work, isn't it? It's not just, you know, you, you say here, well, you couldn't afford the games, you got the games, but it's still a, a huge amount of work you, you owe, I suppose, the developers and the publishers by accepting their games to write the guides for. Yeah, I mean, some games are just really short. I like like what what the Leica games. Hmm. And actually, writing the guide takes longer than playing the game. Yes. Yeah, I like that. So so you started off now, one of the things I like about your site, because there are, you know, there are, as I listen, and there are many guide sites or whatever else, but you set up independently. There are very few independent guide sites. You know, there are a couple now, but you're, you're one of the few that has grown. You've grown substantially in the last year or two. You've added guide writers as well. I know you, you have a big, you know, a European audience or whatever else. So how did you go from just setting it up, you wanted games, to, to where you are today? Well, in the beginning, it was really uh, just writing uh, any company, really. If I, if I didn't like the game, just, just write them and just try to get out there, getting a name. And I found a few uh, yeah, smaller, smaller studios. Um, I would say uh, Lightwood Games with the Pogi Games, um, the Ratalaika Games. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other, the third one is uh, Sometimes You. I think you know them too. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the Russian uh, publisher. Um, I think those three helped me in the beginning. And I actually did write a couple of guides on uh, PS- PSMP profiles, uh, the, the large site. And I had this, this big hit with um, Horizon Zero Turbo something something. It's a racing game. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. T- the Turbo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I, I wrote a guide for that on, on that site. And it became free on PS Plus. Mm. So all of a sudden, all the reviews went up. And I was like, hey, it's really fun. And I started writing more companies and more companies. And eventually I got some, some free keys. Hmm. And uh, the problem was with PSM profiles, you can only start writing a guide uh, once the, the trophies has, have been synced. And um, getting them early on is a problem because uh, the trophies won't be synced and you can't create a page on PSM profiles. So I was like, hey, just let create uh, create my own website and just set up the pages manually and just do my thing really. That's interesting. That that makes a lot of sense. But so going forward, you, you've built a team now around you, or I think a family is a is a is a better term because a lot of these other sites, people are freelancing as as they are with your site as well. But they're sort of all independent, doing their own thing. Your your site very much you you have cross collaboration. You work together on guides and things like this. So how did you build that team? How did you meet these people that are with you now? Well, in the beginning, I was uh, with Colin. He's also Dutch. And he, did, he, he helped me write in guides. He didn't really help me set up the, the site, but he just helped me write in guides. Uh, but eventually he left because he didn't have time anymore. So I, I started looking for, for new writers. And well, our, our biggest uh, social media platform is, of course, Twitter. And I just reached out to people that I really liked. And mm. I believe one of them was Pete in the early stages. Um, and he really liked um, the, these, all these indie games. And he was like, yeah, I don't have time and I can't commit and, and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, hey, man, here's your, here's your code. It's, uh, good luck and just let me know how the game goes. And he sent me all the screenshots and I added them into the, into the guide. And he really liked it. So he joined the team. And eventually uh, I recruited Matthew. It's a UK writer. I think really the same way as I, I recruited uh, Pete. But I think with, with Sean, it's a, it's a different story. Because um, I really saw... Uh, possibility to get some views in, into the, the vi- visual novel uh, games. So I needed a, a, a writer that covers all those games because I really don't like them myself. Just really find them stupid and, and oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Oh, sure. Don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I recruited Sean and he's kind of the boss and the king in, in the visual novel uh, genre. And he, he does a great job. He, he really he really does we, uh, we I had the privilege to speak to him recently and I mean he is such a fascinating guy as well but his passion for those games because whether you, whether you like them or not there's there's a huge amount of work that goes into uh, into them I think a lot of people that don't play them or just you know you know they know about people that skip them or something they just assume that you know you push the button and then the game plays itself but I mean to get to that point to to, to learn about all the branching paths and the directions you need to go and this it, they're massive massive undertakings so 
Yeah, he, he's a wonderful, yes. a wonderful writer. But I'm not, I'm not telling you anything. I'm sure you, you, you know that all. <laughs> you know that all already. I, I want. I would like to mention two things. I, I didn't really think I mentioned before anywhere. Mm. And we have, we have Mario. Mm. He's our proofreader, mm. and he actually is is the son of a game developer. Oh, I didn't know this. And his dad um, offers uh, offered his help. So I was like, yeah, you can, you can, you can uh, do our uh, proofreading. But then his dad was like, oh, I really, I don't have time here. Uh, take my son. <laughs> I was like, huh? who's, who's your son? And yeah, really, that's that's the way how Mario uh, rolled in the team. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And then I know recently you added a new guide writer as well. Now, I've forgotten her name. I apologize in advance. Tracy. Tracy, yes. Uh, so- yeah, um, we, we did recruit her, but she already left the team. Oh. Uh, but that's just really because of uh, of the of the corona stuff. Yes. Um. Yeah, she had to take care of her family, so she didn't really have time. Mm. But she will rejoin once she has uh, has the time again. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, my thoughts go out to, to her and her family as well, uh, and hopefully she, she will be back in, in, in haste as well. But that, that's interesting. Now, we've touched on the visual novel side. I didn't realise that you, you didn't like them particularly, but that makes only the next <laughs> part even more interesting because you do have, have Sean, but it's not only his visual novel guides, although that, that is why predominantly I'm drawn to your site, but from there I've, I've, I've read and, and used all of your, your works across uh, – uh, all your all your guide writers. What I particularly like, and we got into this a little bit with Sean, is that you don't tend to write guides that are just you know spoon feeding the gamer through the game. Maybe the optimal path, if you so prefer, or just basically the the path of least resistance. So many many sites, and again, I don't judge anyone that plays this way, but many sites offer an alternative where it's possible to perhaps platinum the game and you don't even know what you've played. Uh, in effect, you you've been you know your hand has been held so far through the game. You're your guides they offer they offer a path uh, and they offer explanations for the trophies but they don't act as as this sort of a step so uh, i don't know is that something you like in a guide or is that just something that has naturally happened on the site well that's something uh, for the fans that's something uh, sean came up with um mm. he was like well, we can just skip all the tags and just put a, a 10 minute mark or we just put the real time in it and that's mm. really his, his decision that's it's fine with me i mean it's his guides I don't know for a fact that the developers and publishers really like it that if you just put uh, the real time in it, just like uh, 40 hours instead of uh, 10 minutes, if you skip everything, they really like that. Yeah, no, no, look, of course, they're, they're games within themselves. But I mean, even, even you know, beyond the other games that aren't VNs as well, I mean, the racing games and things like this, although a racing game, not, not the perfect example, perhaps, but but I find that, you know, you, you allow the gamer to play the game and you assist them where is needed as opposed to this is the path you should take and i think i think that's what draws me to your site now i'm sure that pisses off a lot of people as well that are are just (laughs) there to save time but i i feel that you're in an interesting position as a guide site because i almost feel like you are you are perhaps catering to people that you know of course are hardcore trophy hunters but maybe are also just gamers that maybe do some trophies on the side sometimes and they come for advice yeah that's true yeah I yeah. think uh, the, the Star Wars racer is also a good example. Uh, I, I bet Driver I, I believe it's something, the, the German uh, trophy hunter that makes the YouTube videos, he actually um, focuses on really getting the game uh, done as fast as possible. So he, he did all these the cheats in Star Wars. And I was mm-hmm. like, what, what's the fun in, in buying a game? Uh, I think it was $15 and then just completing it in 10 minutes. That's not really fun. So just let, uh, com- let's let's try the guy that just completed the game in the normal way without using any cheat. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is refreshing, and as you say, it's refreshing to get the real time on a game as well. Because I know that's always subjective, you know. But but often guide writers, and I'm sure you're used to this, they overestimate the the average skill of the community and perhaps their own skill as well, and they put absurd times sometimes on games. Yeah, that that's true. It's just you know unrealistic and and frustrating at at times too so your site has recently partnered here with a with a pretty big player in the visual novel arena nook gaming uh is is this through how did this sort of come about and and uh and why why did you reach out well sean is always always busy with with his visual novels and he's doing his (laughs) thing and he was like hey mick i got this this two sides and i want to partner with them i was like why i mean what's the deal? He was like, yeah, they're, they're, they're big and, and German this, German that, and, and a lot of views. And I was like, oh my God, why? And he just kept asking. I was like, okay, let's do this. And 
really it isn't really a big thing or something we just um use each other's i would say information they have and we have this 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 little uh, page on our site that refers to them but i, I really did it for sean he, he liked it and he, he wanted it and so i was like, okay that's fine that, let's let's go a bit more to the visual novel novel thing too yes yeah well it's, it's a dicey playing field i'm told the visual novel trophy guide in market so just be careful how big a player you become i suppose in the in the future yeah, there are a lot a lot of uh, other sites yes and i won't mention the, the names but they are accusing of accusing us of copying the guides and that's really just plain stupid but they're actually um trying to discredit us uh, with the publishers. They're emailing them like, ah, this Knuf is copying our guides and, and they're stupid and they're, they're, they're naughty and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, that's really just plain stupid. Yeah, no, look, look, I understand. There's a whole lot of randomness that goes on in these things and, and personal things as well. But, you know, we, we must strive to be above that. Having said that, though, one of the things, and I don't know if you want to comment on this or not, by all means, don't comment if you, if you prefer not to, but I have noticed an increase, in particularly, again, particularly in visual novel guides or short format guides uh, for short games where they may be put in particular steps that are not required in, in a view of catching people stealing their work. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. I understand what's going on, but it's incredibly annoying as fuck for the gamer that has to work out why that's even there or what the hell's yeah. going on. So, so I don't know if you want to comment on that or not, or just leave that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think Sean does that. No, no. Uh, having unnecessary steps in the guide. Um, but it is, it, is a really, it is really terrible if you do that. I mean, you have to you have to you write this guide and and the player is gonna read it and it's like why on earth am I doing step seven eight and nine it's not really necessary and it could be that he just goes to another guide yeah. if he finds out. Yeah, no, look, I think that's fair enough. And we, we won't touch any more on that negativity. Now, I want to just talk briefly, if you can, and of course, you know, only only what you're comfortable saying here, but but you, you've built up a very good network with the, the publishers and, and this side of thing, and also with the devs. How closely, when you're writing a guide, do you work with the devs? Is it completely independent, or is there a bit of back and forth if you get stuck, or how does all that work? Yeah, I mean, uh, our opinion is, of course, independent. Huh? I, I can just say, oh, it's, it's a 5 out of 10 game, or it's really a, a bad game or something like that. I mean, we don't really mm. give opinions, but they don't really influence them either. But if I get stuck, mm. I just email the publisher or the dev, and I'm like, hey, hey man, um, I can't find collectible uh, 7, 8, or 9. Can you help me? And uh, the mm. most, mo- mostly the publishers get back with, with an answer or reply. And um, it's really frustrating, but some publishers even back... With, with the command that, hey man, it's, it's a community effort and uh, good luck finding finding the collectibles. I, I won't help you. <laughs> That's a, that must be wonderful to hear when, when that, that email comes. Yeah, I, I had that with, uh, with, with Down the Rabbit. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find this, this one collectible and I emailed the, the, the publisher and he was like, yeah, well, it's not really fun if I tell you, you have to find out yourself or ask the community. So I just kept looking and eventually I found it. Yeah. But um, yeah, he, he didn't want to give it up. Yeah, no, well, that, that uh, look, more more power, more power to him. I've always wondered what developers feel about trophy guide writers because uh, I mean I know some games sell very highly in the the trophy you know hunters market but the majority of games are bought by people that probably have very little interest in trophies at all and therefore don't use guides and I've always always wondered what you know the, how the devs see this sort of stuff and and you know whether, whether they're embracing of it or whether they feel that you're you know and not you just in general writers are just almost butchering their games for the this, as again as we say this it is possible yeah that's true i i actually had one 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 publisher it was this this vr uh, fishing game um i don't even know the name anymore but i asked for a key and he was like yeah man we don't we don't give keys to do trophy guides man uh you have to, people have to find out themselves where to catch the fish mm. i was like man what a stupid reason you can you at least have the players decide themselves if they want to read a guide or not mm. but he just really didn't want to want to give a key to, to a trophy guide site now, what I want to ask now, is, it's a bit of a different question, if you like, but you're in a good position to answer it. We've seen in the last, you know, two years, but, you know, it's intensifying, even though, you know, we're going through this corona and things are slowing down. Predominantly, it's intensifying. There are so many smaller indie games coming out at the moment. The market is is definitely flooded. I'm sure you see it because you're trying to keep up with guides and things like this. What do you think about all these games? Do you think it's sustainable? 
Yeah, it depends really because um, if you like play 10 indie games, I, I would say two are really good and I would say about five are, are entertaining and I would say the other three are really just horrible. But it really depends on, on the studio, I guess. I mean, if, if they make a profit, they, they can sustain themselves. It's just really up to us to, I would say, discredit them or something. But I, I, I like the indie games because having, having my sight uh, puts me in a position to try out... Um, like almost every game in, in the uh, in the franchise um, and uh, some games I really like and yeah, well, the other games are just plain stupid. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's very refreshing. It, it's true because look, I play a ton of stuff too and I have a similar attitude to you that the, the game is worth as much time as you're willing to put into it. But but if it doesn't yeah. show you the respect, you know, and I don't care what it costs, if it doesn't show you the respect of your time, then it's not worth anything, you know, to me. And, and I ha- therefore have no problems. And I think, I mean, that's a great attitude to have because you can play so many different things, uh, the same with your site. So you, you get to experience a lot of stuff, but you also don't get bogged down in these these other games. But I know there are a lot of, you know, a lot of gamers that won't even dip their toes in the water until they've read a review or a guide or they, they know about the yeah. game because, because there is so much out there that you can't buy everything. Well, maybe Hakum can, but you know the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> the rest of us, you know, we, we we can't. We just don't have the time. Unfortunately. Well, uh, Hakum, Hakum actually gets also games for free. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I understand that. Yeah, that's good. So, so now that you've you know transitioned to full time work, how do you manage the running of the site? Like, is it is it as big a time commitment as it was for you, or is it sort of self sustaining now? It's it's a bit self sustaining. Uh, what I do, I just uh, write the guides. Um, I do the, the PR info, so I email email the publishers and devs. Um, mm. I have Sean do the administration, so getting all the email addresses and contact info into one Excel sheet. Um, he also does a bit of, of PR, and he designs uh, the, the, the social media images. So I guess Sean is, is, is mm. like my, my right hand and, and really helps me a lot. And we have, um, for, for like say, the, the crew, crew talk, we have Discord. So when I get back from work, um, I would say it's about 12 o'clock in, in Canada. So the guys are just, uh, yeah, they don't up too long. So they're like awake for four or five hours at a time. And well, if I get back from work at five, I usually have like this, this 10 pings in, desk, in that Discord. So I always have to read back what they want and what they need and stuff like that. Now, look, I, look I've look, i got a selfish question here and full disclosure, although this, as you know, <laughs> listeners, it doesn't influence anything that I say or do, you know, but, it, you know, I know it's important to some people. I am a, a Patreon of your site. My question is, how annoyed are the guide writers that I have my own channel on that site, basically? <laughs> oh, they like it, actually. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're one of the few patrons we have. Um mm. And it, it really, they really like talking to you, I guess, in, in, the, in, the, in the channel. Yeah. Well, look, you know, it's, it's totally selfish too. I mean, I enjoy talking to them, but it, it's like having a, you know, an, a trophy, a living trophy guide at my fingertips. If I get stuck or if I <laughs> need some help or if I'm not sure if I want to play it, I ask and one of them knows. It's fantastic. Yeah, so. yeah, that's really cool. It's it's very cool. I would I would urge many people to consider that it's a, it's a great perk on uh, of your your Patreon system there. Now, the next part is a double ended question or double loaded question, if you like, as we approach the end here. What uh, what advice would you give to someone that's thinking about starting out on guide writing? Um, <clears throat> I have to show some some sort of commitment, and it really takes up a lot of time. So you have to you have to have actually have time. Um, uh, try to be as professional as possible. Um, you have to be at least in some sort uh, be good in English because if you aren't, you're just going to email the devs and they're like, oh, what's that for, for a clown? And why is he emailing me with so many errors in the mail? So you have to have to some sort of skills in, in English. Um, mm. You have to set up some sort of a platform. Um, I don't really like like the, the YouTubes or the, or the Twitter re- reviews. I think they're just stupid. Just set up a site, um, get start, 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 start at the bottom. I mean, you have to start somewhere. Do a couple of games with your own money, and then reach out to to publishers. So you have at least some sort of content on your website. I, I like that. I think. I mean, just to echo that point, like 
I don't think people realize, and I know, I know you do the guide work and, and I do this, which is a trifle or whatever, but uh, it, I don't think a lot of people understand the amount of work that goes in on the back end to set a lot of that stuff up and also the, the expense as well. So one of the wonderful things I think with guides are that you can attach yourself to, to a site potentially, or potentially your site even. And, uh, and it, it takes a lot of the work away because I mean, you know, you, we haven't discussed today, but the, the, the emailing, the back and forward with publishers, you know, to, to get things to assert yourself with them, to build a relationship, it takes a lot of time and, you know, trust and it's built, built over time. So, I mean, it is possible to, to circumnavigate that if you, if you want to start guide writing by attaching, you know, to, to a major site. Now, where I'm leading at here is that I saw you recently advertised for a guide writer. I'm not sure if you're still still open for submissions or if you've closed that at this point. We are. We are still looking. Yeah. So, so what, what if, if there's someone listening now that goes, you know, I, I want to give this a try. I'm ready to do it. What, do they, what would they need? Do they need to submit some guides? What, what do you want to see? But we don't we don't really require any experience because um, Sean, Pete, and Matthew didn't really write any guides when I recruited them, and they're just perfect. So that's not really something we are looking for. And we are looking for somebody that has a decent scale of English, has has some free time in the week, um, and she just really enjoys writing and, and playing games. And if all that appeals to you, and then you're like, well, you know, maybe I could play the game before release date. You know, well, I know that's important to some people. Um, it, you know, that that's an added bonus, I suppose, of working within an established uh, guide writing site already, uh, as opposed to, you know, trying to start up, I think, think by yourself. Not to mention, of course, being able to draw on the experiences of your other writers, which is a, a thing that your site does so well with your collaboration in guides. Mm-hmm. You get, of course, a free game, so you don't have to buy them anymore. <laughs> I love that you're so honest about this. It's fan- it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, you know what's going to happen is everyone that listens is going to be like, oh, CJ is only doing this because he's getting free games. Look at all these thousands of free games he's getting every week. Well, I, c- I can assure you, listeners, it doesn't always work like that. <laughs> I actually have, uh, I-, I emailed uh, sometimes you, the publisher, and mm. he gave me uh, three Xbox One codes for active uh, neurons. It's a puzzle game. Yes. And you, you are free to give them away to your followers. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll take you up on that uh, offer if that's okay. Uh, and yeah, we'll that's grab fine. those. We'll grab those details at the end. So, look, you know, I'm, I'm conscious of keeping you today, but look, I've really enjoyed this conversation. As I said, you know, I, I'm not sure what your your writers and, and, and you yourself thought of me for some time, but I've really, <laughs> I know I'm a bit of a character, but I've really, it, it, I've really benefited from your site. There's no, there's no two ways about it. And I, I'm not lying when uh, I say that you have some of the most unique guides on there, particularly for Japanese games and not even all visual novels. You have such a wide mix there you have racing games as well you have a, a stack of vr guides as well in your your vr guide section uh ps4 obviously but one of the one of the wonderful things about this site if you're listening if you haven't heard of it if you're thinking of checking them out as i said they have a discord but the guide writers are approachable so you're, you're not going to be messaging messaging some random person who's written one guide these are this is a team that are that are there and they're available to help you out if they get stuck and i see this happening in the discord I think that's a, a fair comment to make, Mick. Yeah, thank you for the compliment. Not not, not at all, not at all. <laughs> so, so just before we wrap up today, Mick, if our listeners, you know, if they're trying to find you, if they want to come say hi, they want to see the work, how is the best way uh, to get in contact with you? Well, of course, you have to you have to check out our website. Um, that's that's knuf.info. And knuf, that's that's written uh, with a K um, as, an, as an kilo. And then an N, November. And then an O as an Oscar, an E as an Echo, and an F as an Foxwood. It's really a typical Dutch name. So I understand if, mm. if, the, if the people around the world have like, hey, what's that for a weird name? But it's, <laughs> it's knoef.info. Um, we do have a Twitter. It's at knoefnl, I believe. Yeah, knoefnl. Uh, that's that's knoefnl from Netherlands, of course. Um, we do have a Discord um, that's on our website. And people can join that and we are just available to chat with them, really. Perfect, perfect. And of course, this is all that information will be in the show notes. Now, look, I can't let you go, so with asking, how is Knuff the dog today? He's fine. He's just he's napping. He's, he's snowing a lot. He's eating all his cookies. <laughs> and yeah, he's, he's, just, he's, doing, he's doing great, actually. He's, he's getting a bit old, actually, but it's, it's just dogs, huh? 
they get old. And now I read, I, I sorry, we're dragging here, but I read his 70 kilogram uh, Mastiff. That's correct, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. It that, is. That's a big animal. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, actually, uh, we have, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it yet, of but course. perhaps oh. it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to mention. We have this, we have this game that's coming out really soon. And it, it will it will future uh, Easter egg of Knuf. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, look, I I... I, I, I I won't say which game it is. No. It, it's quite quite a big indie game, and it will also have a Knuf trophy in it. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Well, look, I can't I can't wait for that. I think. And look, you know what I would love? I'm going to save up my Patreon points for a few years when I have enough of them, and then perhaps I can get a, a photo of Knuf to go with my Knuf trophy. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I would I would love that. <laughs> but that that is that, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that is wonderful. So look, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go there and enjoy enjoy your wonderful day. It sounds like it's a it's a beautiful place uh, and a, a beautiful day for you today. But again, thank you so much for jo- joining me today. It's been a it's been a real honor to finally get to speak to the owner and and a person that I think <laughs> I think of as a friend, even though we've actually never spoken before because I've read and spent so much time with your words and also your fellow writers on the site. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. It was nice talking to you. So there you go, listeners. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did with Mick, the owner of Knuff's Guides, named after the wonderful, wonderful dog, of course. Look, if you're looking for a different guide, you know, or if you're playing a different sort of game, perhaps that is the, the site to check out. And of course, all the contact information will be in the show notes if you so wish. So that brings us towards the end here, the platinum shout outs for this week. Don't forget, if you'd like to get your your, your platinum shout it out and you deserve it you put in the work you definitely deserve it listeners then you can do so either through the community uh push to plat community on the ps4 or via the discord there's a thread in there just jump in and post your picture and a little info about the game if you so wish so we'll start today with eigen space at uh, number 115 final fantasy 13 lightning returns look that is a massive a massive game a massive platinum and that I know you were working on for some time. And look, a little, little behind the scenes, listeners. I actually got to talk to Eigen uh, the other day for the for next week's episode, and we talked a little about that game. So congratulations again. Number 116, Gris, the wonderful, wonderful platformer-esque, I suppose, uh, indie, indie game. Well worth a check if you've never come across that before. Number 117, the Count Lucanor. Again, not her favourite pick, I feel, but we'll probably hear more about that in the future. And just a late inclusion, number Number 118, she's been busy, she's been very busy, The Sims 4, no, I didn't do this the legit way, definitely downloaded all the families from the EA gallery, probably saving yourself, what, 50 to 100 hours, so look, I, I, I completely understand, although... I'm still fascinated whether that's as easy as it sounds or not. I have a feeling that it might be slightly bullshit, listeners. Yeah, you can you can tell me. Boston George is back. Number 173, Dragon Ball Xenoverse PS3. Two more to go. Currently ranked 23 for series completion. Oh, and also Mega Man Pokemon Metroidvania. And much like George, his comments are living in the past. Hmm. Now, Vaughn, number 53, Hyper Dimensions Neptunia Rebirth 2. So I know that he said a while ago he was going to start on the second and he's knocked it out of the park. Congratulations, sir. I believe there's so many Neptunia games, it never ends. So I'm sure you just now, you naturally go to the next one. But look, maybe one day, I don't know if you have, but maybe one day you'd consider the sort of spin-off game. I mean, they're all they're all spin-offs anyway in that series, aren't they? Uh, the Four Goddesses Online. Uh, that's the one I did play and it's, it's good. I I liked it, but you see what you see what you think. You can let me know if you if you so wish. Redbeard Rick, he's back. He's busy. Number one hundred and seventy-five. Bully, the fantastic PS two classic, reported over to the PS four with trophies. Number one hundred and seventy-six. Lord of the Rings: Aragon Quest, the PS three game that I know nothing about, although I understand that's a, that's an impressive platinum. So congratulations, sir. Number one hundred and seventy-seven. Prince of Persia: The Forgotten Sands, also a birthday plat for Rick. Look, I don't know how old he is, but look, it's safe to say he's younger than me, and therefore, you know, we we, we have to respect that i mean 
who isn't these days? But wonderful to see. And what I love about this plot listen is it took him a lot longer than he expected, I think. So it's great that he still managed to, to fit it in on his birthday there. Well done. Well done, sir. Number 179, WWE, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. No online trophies on this, so it can be platted at your leisure. Well, look, you know, George could be interested in that. I mean, he loves old things, so, you know... No, that could be perfect for him. You should you should pass that on. Uh, Afraid of the Folly is back. Uh, the gentleman from England. I hope you are well, well, sir, and uh, and safe and and surviving in this current climate. Number six. Oh, it's unfortunate. You know, I was so pleasant, and now you drop a skilled game on me. I see how it is, sir. Number sixty-five. Crash Bandicoot. The highly skilled game. Although <clears throat> Folly does have children, and this requires very precise and quick movements. So. Congratulations to your family on a on a wonderful plat there. So if if that is what happened, we, we can't say for sure, listeners, of course. Zador VP, number 468. Oh, there's lots of Lego from him this week. Lego the Hobbit PS4. He says, all Hobbit stacks done. Shame they cancelled the third movie DLC. A much more fun Lego game than Force Awakens. Of course, he did that the other week, but not... Not a big fan. Uh, soulless Game, I believe, was his uh, critical acclaim there. I'll print that on the box art next time. Uh, number 469, Lego Movie 2, the video game. Did all the non-trophy-related stuff in the base game, as we would expect, sir. As we would expect. As well. All characters, objects, vehicles, all scanned objects, all sets. Congratulations. Of course you would do that, and I, I salute you for that. It's important somebody does. Uh, will play through the DLC as well, but might not scan everything there, despite there being the only really enjoyable part of this Lego game. Oh, so I think the DLC was the part that had no trophies, but, you know, I'm sure you'll do it at some point, so, you know, just to get the full full Lego experience there. Uh, Renichi, a number 156, Deadfall Adventures Heart of Atlantis. Uh, congratulations, sir. It is a, a travesty on my behalf. I do not know this game, but uh, I expect that it's a, it's a skilled plat, uh, seeing, seeing how you play normally. Congratulations. Mr. Tam, uh, my latest platinum was for Final Fantasy 13, Lightning Returns. Look, everybody is playing that at the moment. And it only took <laughs> six years, four months, and 25 days. I know I should become a speedrunner. Well, look, that's, you know, there's nothing to sneeze at, sir. I mean, a lot of people have finished that game in less than six years, four months, and 25 days. But the fact that you didn't, the fact that you're setting a time record here, you know, admittedly on the longer end, it's still an achievement. And and you should feel proud of that. I mean, you may never have another game that takes you that long. So I'm going to celebrate that. And, I, and I, feel, I feel you should as well. Congratulations, sir. And the last entry, this could be a new member or perhaps a, a new poster. I'm not sure. But uh, either way, welcome, welcome, sir. Uh, Yolt. Reese, number 33, Duke Nukem, 3D, a weird fun, very easy, only grindy trophy is kill 1,000 enemies, there's also a YouTube guide just in case, it's a great game, it's a little spammy perhaps, but you know, it's forgiven because it's Duke, it's, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, so don't forget listeners, as we said, if you want a shout out, you know what to do, if you don't, rewind it a couple of minutes, it'll tell you, so until next week, I think we've come to that point where we can we can we can bid each other adieu for this week, listeners. Don't forget, you can still help us out. You know, even if you if you don't want to do the Patreon, because why would you? I'm not giving that bastard money. Uh, you know, uh, then then you can still help us out other ways, of course, by spreading the word, by subbing on YouTube, even if you don't listen to it on YouTube. Look, I don't, but you know, the the people in the PR or the offices, they're convinced it's important. <laughs> I'm not so sure, but you know, you can, you can sub there or whatever else, you know, do, do whatever you like, write a comment if you want, I don't care, do whatever you want, jump in the, the discord if it so interests you, if you want to say hi, and I'll also like to thank, I know in the last month I've had a lot of messages on PSN, direct messages as well from people that are dropping in and out or listening or taking a break or, or finding us for the first time, and to you, I welcome you, you know, I don't know, this is, this is a different sort of podcast, you know, I'm a different sort of gamer, I suppose, what can you expect, but I hope you find something of value here. And of course, because the guest changes every week. Not every week is for every person. But, you know, if it's for you, then tell me. You know, if it's not, you can tell me that as well. But it has been wonderful to, to meet so many of you, particularly Europeans in the last month or two. I see our numbers, which are continuing to grow, uh, are starting to to um to 
I stabilize? Well, no, they're growing in Europe as well, which is wonderful. So perhaps there's a shortage of entertainment there. I'm not, I'm not sure. But either way, I do, I do welcome you and thank you. So as always, have a wonderful week. May the trophies fly every which way, hopefully landing on your account. And look, if you need a guide, well, hmm, maybe there's a new place to check out for you. Have a wonderful week. I'll speak to you soon. Push to Plat podcast are conceived, written and edited by CJ Anderson in Adobe Audition. YouTube upload handled by repurpose.io. Music licensing by artist.io. Push to Plat would like to thank our Patreon producers, Zador VP, Redbeard Rick, T-Bird, Olcero and Ready to E-Bag. Without your support, this show would cease to exist. If you would like to say hi, jump into the Discord in the show notes or on Twitter at push to plat If you're interested in supporting the show, then jump on Patreon, the push to plat Patreon, where you can find more information on how to support us and allow us to continue to bring wonderful guests and topics from around the world. Yeah.